Fourier series is useful to solve the non-homogeneous OE with periodic decidation. For example, in this case, for a mass spring system, the mass is 10, damping coefficient is 0 0.5, and the stiffness is 250. And this mechanical system is assigned by the periodic force here, which is given in this figure. The force is a rectangular wave, repeat itself over the time from negative infinity to infinity. The period is one cycle, which is equal to 2 pi. And you can get the angular frequency to be 2 pi divided by the p. Substitute p equals to 2 pi inside your plane 1. For one period, you see two functions from 0 to 5 your force is 10 from pi to 2 pi your force is negative 10 so the force is in theory format with the period equal to 2 pi so you have non-zero right hand side which is your excitation force and the vibration due to this force can be computed by this formula the total vibration is equal to the transient solution plus the steady state solution. The transient solution is caused by the initial condition. Since initial conditions are zero, therefore the transient solution will be equal to zero as well. And the steady state vibration here is totally due to the non-zero force here. To solve this problem, first of all, you need to convert the periodic force into the Fourier series format. So let's retrieve all the important parameters from this function. So previously we obtained the period equal to 2 pi. Therefore the half period is pi. So your omega is 2 pi over p. Substitute p inside you obtain 1. And then your frequency is equal to 1 divided by p which is 1 over 2 pi. So these are the important information that you should know. If you look at this function, the positive data here is copied to the left hand side in upside down manner. So it's an off function that can satisfy this formula. For example, at t equal to pi over 2 here, so you obtain 10. At t equal to negative pi over 2 here, you obtain negative 10. Multiply with negative, you obtain left hand side equal to right hand side. So this equation is valid, therefore this is odd function. Since we know this is an odd function, therefore we can simplify the Fourier series into Fourier prime series. So this is the result where the periodic function Pt is equal to the sine term only. And your A0 and An are both 0. Next, you can compute the Fourier coefficient Bn by using this formula. As you have learned previously, the fx must be chosen within a period. For example, you can choose from here to here. This is one period, which is equal to 2 pi. It's not necessary to choose between negative L to L here. You can also choose the other region, as long as the fx is within one period. So in this case, the period is 2 pi. So we can change it to integrate from 0 to 2L. You will still obtain the same answer. You have two functions within this region. Therefore, you need to integrate it separately. So let's integrate the function equal to 10 here from 0 to pi. And then you integrate from pi to 2 pi for the function equal to negative 10. So after you integrate the sine nx, you obtain negative cos nx divided by n here. Integrate sine nx, you obtain the negative cos nx divided by n. And multiply with the negative here, you obtain positive. Substitute pi inside, you obtain cos n pi. Substitute 0 inside, you obtain cos 0 which is equal to 1. So negative negative here become positive. Then substitute 2 pi inside, you obtain cos 2 pi n. Substitute pi inside, 
you obtain the cos n pi. Cos 2 pi here will be always equal to 1, as you can see from the cos t here. So for 2 pi is equal to 1, for cos 4 pi is also equal to 1, so it will be always equal to 1 here. Therefore, 1 plus 1 here, collect the term for 10 over n pi, you obtain 2. Negative cos n pi, negative cos n pi, you obtain negative 2 cos n pi. Then, collect the term for the 2, you obtain 20 here, and here you obtain 1 minus cos n pi. So, why is cos n pi? If you look at this, cos n pi when n equal to 1, you have negative 1. When n equal to 2, you have positive 1. When n equal to 3, you have 3 pi, which is negative 1, and so on. So for odd number, you obtain negative 1. For even number, you obtain positive 1. Therefore, we can simplify the cos n pi equal to negative 1 n. So if you try substitute n equal to 1 inside, you obtain negative 1. n equal to 2, you obtain 1. n equal to 3, you obtain negative 1, and so on. So you success to obtain the answer for the bn. So you substitute inside the Fourier series formula here and you obtain the pt equal to this answer. Then you can continue to expand this function by substitute n equal to 1. You obtain 20 divided by pi. 1 minus minus 1. Sine 1 omega t, which is omega t. 1 minus minus 1 here give you 2. 2 multiply 20, you obtain 40 over pi. Therefore, you obtain this answer. So don't forget to substitute your omega. So omega is equal to 1 here. Don't forget you obtain the omega equal to 1 previously. For the next index, n equal to 2, substitute inside here. You obtain 20 divided by 2 pi, multiply with 1 minus 1, sine 2 t. So 1 minus 1 here gives you 0. 0 multiply this, you obtain 0. Therefore, n equal to 2, you have nothing here. Substitute n equal to 3 inside this formula, you obtain this answer. So 1 minus negative 1 gives you 2. 2 multiply 20 divided by 3 pi, you obtain 40 over 3 pi. Sine 3t. Three so this is when your n equal to 3. So if you continue n equal to 4, you obtain the answer to be 0. Because when you substitute n equal to 4 inside, 1 minus 1 here, it will become equal to 0. So for your even number, for the n here, this will be always equal to 0. Therefore, you obtain 0 for the answer. So we just focus on the odd number here. So you can see the pattern 1, 3, 5. 7, 9, and so on. So you have 40 over pi, 40 over 3 pi, 40 over 5 pi, 40 over 7 pi, and so on. So from here you can see your Bn is equal to 40 over n pi when your n is odd number, and your Bn will be equal to 0 when it is even number. With that, we success to obtain our forest series answer and success to expand it. So you must know that this PT function is valid for any interval from negative infinity to infinity. You have success to obtain the Fourier series result here previously. When you substitute the n index inside, you observe that the result has zero. In fact, we do not need to perform the calculation for the zero. To avoid wasting time in compute the zero answer, we can improve the series format into this format. These two series give us the same result, 
but this one is more efficient because you do not need to compute the zero result here. For example, when you substitute n equal to 1 inside this formula, you obtain 40 over 2 minus 1, you obtain 1. Therefore, this is pi. 2 minus 1, you obtain 1, therefore you obtain t. So you see, you obtain the exactly same answer here. When you substitute n equal to 2 inside, you obtain 40 divided by 2 multiplied 2, 4, minus 1, 3, 3 pi you obtain. And then you have 2 multiplied 2, minus 1, you obtain 3 t. And you obtain this answer here. You see the new series is more efficient because it avoids the unnecessary step to compute the zero here. So how can we convert from the old series to the new series? So if you look at our n index for the old series, we want the odd number only, which is equal to 1, 3, 5, and so on. Therefore, we write here. So this is our desired answer. And we want to eliminate the even number for n. So the new n in your new series, it must be start from 1, followed by 2, 3, and so on. Then we need to think a formula that link between the old n and new n here. If you have the new n equal to 1, 2, 3, and your old n equal to 2, 4, 6, therefore, easily you can form the old n is equal to 2 multiplied with your new n. If you check this equation, substitute 1 inside here, you obtain 2 for the ON, which is correct. Substitute 2 inside, you obtain 4 for the ON, which is correct. Substitute 3 inside, you obtain 6 for the ON. Therefore, we can say this equation is valid. And if you check this result and the desired result that you want, you just need to minus this with 1. If you minus with 1, then all of them will minus 1, and you obtain 1, 3, 5. Therefore, this is the formula that you want. So you can substitute the formula here into the n here. So change it, you obtain 2n minus 1 here, and multiply with pi here. So this one will change to 2n minus 1 as well. So for 2n minus 1, you will always obtain 1, 3, 5, and so on. So this is odd number. So negative 1 power of odd number, you will always obtain negative 1. 1 minus negative 1, you obtain 2. 2 multiply 20 here, you obtain 40. Therefore, you have 40 here. Sign n t, substitute n to this formula, you have 2n minus 1 here. So this is the answer. And don't forget the index. The O index here is 1. So substitute 1 for the O index. So what is your new index? So 1 here, you change to the left hand side, you obtain positive. So this one will become 2. 2 equal to 2 new. So the new number for the index is equal to 1. Therefore, you can substitute 1 inside here. Therefore, you success to simplify the O formula for the series into the new series here. Bear in your mind, for the application in ODE, you can use either one of the series here. Both series will give you the same answer. So if you don't want to simplify it, and you want to proceed with the old series, that's fine. You will still get the same answer. So you should know now, why we can simplify the previous series into this format. Let's continue to discuss about the linear superposition concept. So you have a linear system here, and you have a force given by this formula. And you see this force is comprised of a lot of small force inside, until infinity. So you see the amplitude for the force is the highest for the first term, and it reduces for the second term, reduces for the third term, and so on. High amplitude of the force will cause high response. And not only that, 
the frequency is also important to identify if the response is high or not. So you will learn the effect of the excitation frequency from the force towards the response in this study. So linear superposition say that if you have a force 1 here acting on the system, then for the system monitoring, you only have force 1 acting on this system. And the response that you obtain is due to force 1. If you have force 2 only acting on the system, then the system monitoring will be due to force 2 only. And you will obtain the result due to force 2. If you have force 1 and force 2 acting on the system simultaneously, then the response here will be combined in superposition. The total response due to force 1 and force 2 is just the combination of x1 plus x2. If you have 20 force acting on the system simultaneously, then the total response will be equal to the combination of these 20 response. So far, you have success to obtain the forest series for the force which is equal to this, and you can further simplify it into this format. Both formats can be used to solve the problem, so in this example, we will use the second format here. Recall the method of undetermined coefficient that you learned previously to solve the non-homogeneous ODE. So you should expect your total response is equal to the complementary response plus particular response. So complementary solution is also equal to the transient solution. Particular solution is also equal to the steady state solution. When you let the right hand side equal to zero and apply the initial condition to this, you obtain the complementary solution. So this is the homogeneous part for the ODE. Since the initial condition are given zero, therefore, without the calculation, you should be able to obtain the complementary solution equal to zero. If you insist want to prove this answer, then you can use the characteristic equation to solve the xt. Then you should obtain the general solution for the xt in terms of the unknown c1 and c2. Then you substitute the initial condition inside. Solve it, then you obtain the c1 equal to 0. So since your second initial condition is xt dot, Therefore, you need to differentiate the xt here and you obtain the xt dot. So substitute the second initial condition inside, solve it, then you obtain the c2 equal to 0. So substitute back the c1 and c2 inside this formula, calculate it, you should obtain your xt equal to 0. So bear in your mind, if you know the initial condition is 0, then without the need of calculation, you should know the complementary solution or the transient solution is equal to zero. Since initial condition is zero, therefore you obtain zero complementary solution. Next, we move to the non-homogeneous part of the ODE where you have non-zero at the right hand side to obtain the particular solution. Since your right hand side is a periodic function, which is given by this rectangular wave function with period equal to 2 pi. By using the method of undetermined coefficient, we can propose the possible particular solution, which is this answer. Since this is a periodic function, therefore your particular solution will be in the Fourier series format, and you are going to find the A0, AN, and BN here. For example, since your periodic force is equal to this series, therefore your particular solution will be equal to this, where we can replace the omega equal to 2n minus 1 here. 2n minus 1 is not equal to this, which is the root of the characteristic equation that you saw in the homogeneous part previously. Since they are not equal, therefore no treatment is needed and this is the actual particular solution. So first of all, you need to differentiate xp into xp prime. Differentiate the a0, which is constant, you obtain 0. Differentiate cos, you obtain negative sine. And multiply with the coefficient. Differentiate sine, you obtain cos. 
and multiply with the coefficient. Then you differentiate again to obtain x double prime. So this one is cancelled already. So you differentiate the sign, you obtain cos, and you multiply with 2n minus 1, you obtain 2n minus 1 power of 2. So differentiate cos, you obtain negative sign, and multiply again with 2n minus 1, you obtain this power of 2. So this is the non-homogeneous part for the ODE. Substitute x double prime into the d square x over dt square. Substitute the x prime into the dx over dt. And then substitute the xp here into the x. After you substitute, you should obtain this. Then you can rearrange the equation into cos, sine, and constant. You compare the coefficient for the constant. From left hand side, you have 250a0. From right hand side, you don't have the constant, which is equal to 0. Therefore, a0 is equal to 0. Next, compare the coefficient for the cos 2n minus 1t, which is over here. So, the coefficient here is negative 10 2n minus 1 square an, which is this. Take the coefficient here. You have this. Lastly, you have 250an. And then on the right hand side, you have 0 for the cost term here. Therefore, the coefficient is 0. So you rearrange this. Put the Vn on the left hand side in terms of An. So you must know your N is starting from 1, 2, 3 and so on. Because from this term here, your N is start from 1 to infinity. Therefore, we know the n is starting from 1, 2, 3, and so on for this equation. By using the same procedure, you can compare the coefficient for the sign. So on the left hand side, this coefficient plus this plus this is equal to the coefficient on the right hand side here. Therefore, you obtain this equation. Collect the term for bn, then you obtain this coefficient. Previously, you obtain the Vn when you compare the coefficient for the cos, which is equal to this answer. So after you substitute inside, you should obtain this. Then you multiply both sides with 0 0.5, multiply with 2n minus 1. So this term will be cancelled. And then you, you multiply with the right hand side. 2n minus 1 here will be cancelled with this. And then 0 0.5 multiply 40 you obtain 20. So you have 20 over pi here. So this is the answer. Then you collect the term for the an, which is equal to 20 over pi here, divided by the coefficient for the an here. Then you can further simplify this equation by multiplying these two terms. You obtain this. 2n minus 1 square here, can be add up to obtain this answer. So this is the final answer for the AN. Previously, your BN is equal to this answer. So now you found your AN to be this answer. You substitute inside. Then you can obtain the BN in this answer. So you obtain your A0 to be 0. Then substitute the answer for AN and BN. You obtain the particular solution to be this. So your total answer is equal to 0 plus the particular solution. Therefore, for the particular solution, you obtain here. Substitute n equal to 1. You should obtain 2 minus 1, which is equal to cos t. Substitute n equal to 1 here, you obtain 2 minus 1, which is equal to sine 1 t, which is this. Substitute n equal to 1 inside here, you obtain this coefficient. Substitute n equal to 1 to bn here you obtain another coefficient here. So this is the answer when n is equal to 1. You can repeat the same procedure by substitute n equal to 2. Then 2 multiply 2, you obtain 4. 4 minus 1, you obtain 3. So this will give you 3 as well. So you have cos 3t, sine 3t here, which is these two terms. And if you compute the coefficient here, you obtain these two things. So this is when you compute the n equal to and you can continue with the n equal to 3 to obtain this, n equal to 4, n equal to 5, 
and n equal to 6 and so on by using this formula. So this is your final answer. As a rule of thumb, you just need to provide at least 4 partial summation term here. 1, 2, 3, 4. And the remaining term here, you can represent it by using this symbol. 3 dot. In actual case for the true analysis, we will consider at least 20 partial summation terms here for a good approximation for S daughter. If higher accuracy is needed, then we can always increase more term for the better approximation. To study the effect of the excitation frequency, which is omega, on the response, we conduct a further study here. This is the periodic force that you excite on the system, which gives the response equal to this. So you see, if you assign the system with 40 over pi sine t, you obtain the response to be this. This term is when n equal to 1. When you draw this term, you obtain a sine wave, and you can find the amplitude for the sine wave by using the formula here. So take the coefficient here, power of 2, plus coefficient here, power of 2, and take the square root. So this is the magnitude that you obtain when you excite the system with force equal to P1 here. When you excite the system with the P2 force here, then you obtain the corresponding response at n equal to 2. When you plot it, you obtain this, where you have more oscillation because the omega is 3. And then you can obtain the amplitude, which is from 0 to the peak, to be this answer. So this is the response due to the force P2. By repeating the same procedure, if you assign the force P3 here to the system, then the corresponding response will be this, which is the response when n is equal to 3. So if you plot it, you obtain this curve. You can find the amplitude here to be 1.0190. So this is the response due to the P3. If you continue to assign the system with P4, then the corresponding response can be found here, which is when you substitute n equal to 4. So this is the graph for the response, where you can see from here, the amplitude can be computed by using this formula, which is equal to this. And if you continue with other force, then you can obtain the corresponding response using the same approach. What we are interested here is, what is the excitation frequency that has the highest response? So for the first case here, you can see cos omega t where your omega is equal to 1. Therefore, the excitation frequency is equal to 1 and you obtain the magnitude of the response to be this. So for the second case, you have cos 3t, so your omega equal to 3, then this is the magnitude of the response. Third case, your omega equal to 5, you obtain this response. Lastly, you have omega equal to 7 and omega equal to 9. And this is the corresponding response. So which frequency here has the highest magnitude of the response? So if you check, you found that when the excitation frequency is equal to 5, the vibration is the highest. And when you take the superposition of all the response that you obtain here by adding all of them together, so after you take the superposition of all the response here, this is the result. And when we compute the amplitude of this sp daughter, we found that it's approximate to the sp3, which is the response that you obtain at excitation frequency equal to 5 previously. So if you compare the sp daughter and also the sp3 result here, side by side, you found that 
not only the frequency of the vibration is similar, but also the amplitude is close. Therefore, we can say that the vibration at excitation frequency equal to 5 here dominate the total response. So why you obtain the maximum vibration at the excitation frequency equal to 5 here? And why the vibration at the excitation frequency equal to 5 will dominate the total response? This is because of the resonance. Resonance happens when the excitation frequency equal to the natural frequency. And you can find the natural frequency by using this formula. Natural frequency is equal to square root k over m. And you can obtain the k and m from the question where your m is equal to 10 and your k is equal to 250. Therefore, you can compute the natural frequency to be square root k over m, substitute k and m inside, and compute it, you obtain the natural frequency equal to 5. This explains why the SP3 has the highest vibration and it dominates the total response. This is because the excitation frequency is equal to 5 from here. And when you compare it with the natural frequency, they are equal. So in this case, resonance happens and you will have the maximum vibration. To further master the application of the forest series in ODE, is highly recommend you to do the following exercise. So, instead of using the new series, try to use the old series here and solve this ODE. Compared to the new series that we use in this example, you should obtain the same answer for the solution regardless of the new series or the old series that you use. So try this and check if you can get the same answer for both results. You can also try this exercise by let the damping equal to 0. So previously you have mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx which is equal to the forcing function and your m is equal to 10, your c is equal to non-zero, k is equal to 250 and your force is a rectangular wave. In this case, your damping is 0, C equal to 0, which means the vibration that you obtain will be increased. This is because the function for the damping is to reduce the vibration. If the damping is 0, therefore your vibration will be increased significantly. We call this as undamped case. When you compute the natural frequency for this system, where your k is equal to 250 and your max is equal to 10, you obtain the natural frequency equal to 5. So you should know that for the response at the excitation frequency equal to 5, which is equal to the natural frequency here, you will have the resonance. Previously, you obtained the maximum vibration at the resonance case, where the omega equal to 5 is equal to the natural frequency. And in this case, you are using the damping C equal to 0 0.5. What will happen if you reduce this damping to 0? What will happen to the vibration here? Since damping is used to control the vibration or reduce the vibration, if you set the damping equal to 0, it means there is no damping. So in this case, you will obtain infinity high vibration. Try to do this exercise set the c equal to 0 and see if you obtain the response at the frequency match with the natural frequency there which is the resonance case and check if you obtain the coefficient here equal to infinity it means that the amplitude of the response is infinity high and this high vibration will cause the damage to the mechanical system try this out